said he'd let his play do the talking. talking. I talked to Raymond about it this week. He said that Charleston Hughes feels the same way. He's not going to complain about it. He's going to let his play do the talking. And I think he's off to a good start with a sack of Anthony Calvillo in this game. <laughs> Yeah, we get them fired up. You know, when this first started a couple years ago, I I know I was trying to figure out because it's so subjective and there's 25 voters and and so it should shake out in the wash somehow. And I was a little, you know, concerned about that very fact, but I love this list now. And we can continue to do this. It fires the players up. It gets them talking. They want to get on the list, and there's some that say, including Jim Pop, general manager of the Montreal Reds, who said, hey, if you're not happy with where you were, play better. There's Calvillo throwing it from the ground. Almost intercepted Jerome Simpson on the pass. Comes up with the ball. The officials on the scene say incomplete. Quincy Butler is in perfect coverage on Bratton. He, he's closing quickly. Zero inside there. He gets his hands on it. Now you'll see Juwan Simpson. Does he catch? No, that bounced off the turf up into his chest. Well, you're used to this. The offensive guys get the headlines, but the biggest story of this day might be the way this Calgary defense yeah. is shutting down a high-powered, highly fought up Montreal offense. It looks at second and ten. Whitaker on the run. Whitaker's got first down. And sent cartwheeling on the play by Bennett. Now that doesn't happen very often where on second and long, like second and ten, you see draws in second and five, second and four. It's, it's really to try and catch the defense off guard, which you have to say it does here for the Montreal Wets because Brandon Whitaker with a nice cut there to bounce it. Hit and cut down by Brandon West, Brandon, but he gets Brandon it. Smith, Brandon or, excuse Smith. me, Brandon Smith. <laughs> this is Brandon's everywhere. <laughs> we'll get him sorted out. Brandon Whitaker, 10 carries, 50 yards now. Let the league in 10 yard runs or more last year. From the 50, AC going deep. And overthrowing the intended target. Trying to connect with Brian Bratton once again. You know, it's been a pretty good game for Keenan McDougal. I talked about right off the top of the show. And is, it, is the safety is playing for Eric Fraser, who's hurt out of the U of S. Brian Towers' program there in, in Saskatoon playing nice and deep in this game to be safe. And Anthony Calvillo tries to move him here. Watch him stay in his nice back pedal there. That time he didn't open his hips to the field. Was an influence and was over there to help out if needed. And has that touchdown on a fumble return early in this game. Should mention he's starting because Eric Fraser, the designated starter in preseason, suffered a concussion incomplete as Galvillo short hops it to Brandon Whitaker. Kind of had the expectation coming into the third quarter. We might see the Alouettes get some traction with all that firepower, but they continue to be held in check. White's kick bounding down to Taylor. And he'll be taken down by Eric Delorier after a 40-yard boot. Mentioned the two elder statesmen in the Canadian Football League. It's still at the very beginnings of their head coaching careers here in the CFL when you think they both arrived in 2008. Isn't it amazing? In four years, their records virtually identical. It, it really separated is. Separated by one tie. Yeah, it really is amazing how close they are. And so competitive and great in their own divisions. Look at how close those records are. And two great cups for Tressman in 09 and 2010. And of course, in Tressman's first year, Hopnagel's first year as a head coach back in the league, he beat Montreal in Montreal. No way. There goes Nick Lewis again up across the 30 to the 33 yard line, closing in on a 100 yard day. And, and John Huffnagel, of course, just signing a th beginning in this offseason with the new ownership here in Calgary. With the Calgary Flames involved that made sure that they got their general manager head coach locked up to five years. So he signed a contract extension. will be here in Calgary for some time. Good decision. Tenth catch of the day for Lewis. Sets up second and one. Both lead by Mitchell. Nothing there. 
didn't get any push that time and gets tossed back. Let's see where forward progress is marked. Eastern Washington quarterback won the job from Brad Sinopoli, who was the third string quarterback last year. Played with great confidence in the preseason. And will play on short yardage like that and also will hold field goal formation. And did get enough for the first down. Marked at the 35. Back in Tate for the final play of the third quarter. Take the corner, has some time, has Logan Talley. Jim Cox wrestles him out. First catch for Talley and into Montreal territory at the Alouette 53-yard line. Final play, third quarter, Calgary in charge. There are the numbers through three quarters of play here at McMahon. Well, Drew Tate's look good, Nick Lewis has looked good, John Cornish looked good, but the story of this game is the Calgary Stampeder defense. How many times in his career as an Alouette has Anthony Calvillo been held to eight first downs over three quarters? I mean, the, the story of this game has been that Stamps defense. And especially early in the season, the Alouettes are great front runners in, in a positive way. They, they start quickly because they do have continuity. They, they have these star players. Again, the CFL top 50 has Three, number two, three, and four, they're all on offense and they've all been stifled today. Well, well they've had the league leaders, Jamel Richardson, Brandon Whitaker, and Anthony Calvillo, and yet that Calgary defense kept them in check. Here's Cornish trying to get inside, and that's Kenny Ingram who's got a hand on him, and now Cornish comes up pushing. Just before we went to that break, this was the play that got them the first down. I want to show you a little great old line play from Demetrius Sumpus, the right guard for the Calgary Stamp Peters, number 67, working up there on Ventrell Jenkins. And he just stones him at the line, allowing Tate a lot of time in that pocket to wait for his receiver to cross the formation and get to the opposite sideline. Canadian right guard up front doing a good job on that play. Second and ten. Into the flat. Lewis there drops the ball on the turf. Montreal's got it. Nick Lewis caught it in traffic and immediately dropped it. They're ruling a catch and a fumble and Alouette football. Looks like Marc Olivier Bruet at the bottom of the pile may have come up with it. And the battle continues. And was that Dwight Anderson involved in that play as well? Yes, he breaks up in there and, and cuts in front of R.J. Franklin. Well, you could see that Nick Lewis had possession and then the ball hits the ground. So I, I think they got the call right. That's, that's some kind of play by Dwight Anderson there. So Anderson, who has an interception, has a Force fumble now, and Calvillo trying to get something going, and he does here. A play for Jamel Richardson, and then a catch down to the 25. That's the accuracy we're used to from Anthony Calvillo. This crossing route takes time, and Calvillo gets it here from the veteran O-line, but this, the accuracy on this throw is the story. As he steps into that one, pretty good protection there but let's show you the guy who finished ninth in our top 50 that left tackle Josh Burke working one-on-one -on, -one on Chris McCoy stone <laughs> 30 for Richardson first down Alex Calvillo looks over the middle and incomplete pass behind Brian Bratton and when I say stoned I mean the stop the guy at the line of scrimmage version I just want to make sure there's <laughs> no confusion on that one. Now we had a good talk with him, and he talked about how the defensive line play in the CFL has improved so drastically over the last even three or four years. He says, boy, there's just no game off anymore. Up second and ten. Calvillo has an open Eric Delorier and Delorier has a first down. Craig Bennett tosses him down, but Delorier moves the chains. And I think we got this pick right in, in picking Josh Burke as number nine 
and the top Canadian on our top 50 list. And I'm going to show you a little great old line play. Look at the nice feet. He's got his hands active and in the chest of Chris McCoy. Really manhandling and pushing him inside so Calville can get the ball out of there. Big guy out of Windsor. Mentioned his mom cares about the ranking. She makes a trip from Windsor to Montreal for every home game. Here comes the pressure. Calvillo trying at the end zone. It's the top. Quincy Butler. And Butler up the sidelines, pushed out. Another interception of Anthony Calvillo. First CFL interception for Quincy Butler, a late addition last year to the Stamp Secondary. Out of Texas Christian and gets a chance because Anthony Calvillo really had no time to throw. Wasn't because of the O-line play. It was because of the young free safety for the Calgary Stampeders. We'll see you that in a sec. Second interception thrown by Calvillo on the day. That play worked earlier in the day, but not this time. The McDougal family can hey, set the VCR once more for the young free safety. Keenan McDougal is going to force this interception from the safety spot. This is a guy in his first start in the CFL. Watch the timing on this safety blitz as he's going to come right through the middle and force Anthony Calvillo into a chuck and duck. He's got to get out of the way, watch him throw it and fall away from this, put too much air under it, and that allows Quincy Carter to get underneath that football. Or, or Butler, I should say. Lost the four, second and 14, Calgary. Tate on a roll. Down downfield. Orzani's got a catch. Up across the 40-yard line, it's a first down. 17 yards, Tate to Forzani. Ah, pretty good throw on the run here for Drew Tate. Well, watch it. When he's going that fast, he makes that throw look easy, but it isn't. It, you're, you're running that fast to even to your right, which is the strong side on a right-armed quarterback, but it's a very accurate throw when he's running that fast. Inside handoff to the 45 for three yards. You're right about the concern. It was kind of quiet concern after a preseason less than spectacular for Drew Tate. But his number's good tonight. And other than a, a couple of interceptions, really back-to-back, -back, it's been a, a top-to-bottom good game for Drew Tate in his first start of 2012 and first start to the beginning of the, his career. First full season. Second down. Oh, shit. Up top. And he's got Chris Bauman. Chris Bauman, free agent signing, former number one overall pick back in 2007, has a huge gain on that pass from Drew Tate. Watch Emery in the middle. He's coming on the blitz, and he is picked up nicely. Middle linebackers picked up. Gives Drew Tate time to get it out there to Bauman. Let's take a look at that old line play up front because you can see number 41 coming. Demetrius Supas, with help from Stanley Bryant, stops the blitz. The blitz is stopped. Drew Tate has time. 40 yards to the Brandon native. Chris Bauman. Cornish. Not much there off the right side as he spikes the ball. No gain on the play. I'm not sure what John Cornish is so upset about. I well, he gets seven on every carry, <laughs> and he didn't that time. <laughs> I guess. I guess. I mean, I, I know the expectation is success on every play, but... Injured Alouette, defensive lineman Marquez Morrell getting attention. Just under nine and a half minutes left here in the fourth quarter. Shop at Safeway in Pacific on TSN2. Second and ten for Tate to the stamps. Matt Walter in the running back. Landon Talley to his screen. 
Kenny Ingram nails him going west instead of north. One too many moves back into the middle. Often receivers on these hit screens want to get maybe one or two shakes, come in and then break down the field, but one too many, and you're right, Kenny Ingram, pretty good hit. One of the newcomers, many new faces in this Alouette defense. So Rene Paradis comes in, looking at a 32-yarder. And it's good. Stamps with 38. 